In this video, I am going to discuss the scariest mythical creatures or folklore from around the world. I am then going to rank these creatures from creepy, but we could vibe all the way down to please don't exist. Seven, Bigfoot. Okay, so right off the bat, I probably know what you're thinking. What? Bigfoot's not scary. It's not creepy. I wanted to start tame because this video gets dark quick. With Bigfoot being one of the most well-known mythological creatures, I did want to touch on him quickly because I feel like with how well-known he is, there are a lot of elements of his lore that are not talked about. Okay, so for starters, Bigfoot is alleged to be anywhere from 6 to 15 feet tall, muscular, and smelly. With as much evidence that may exist about Bigfoot, there is still a lot that is relatively not known. And for me personally, this unknown makes Bigfoot a rather scary creature. Just imagine yourself up in the mountains, hiking in Oregon. You smell an awful stench that you can't quite describe and you can't quite identify the source of. And you turn around and you see this 15 foot tall muscular ape looking at you. Is your first thought going to be, oh wow, this is cool? Probably not. You're probably going to be terrified, like if you saw any large animal in the wild. With as little as we know about Bigfoot's behavior, it isn't necessarily documented to have had any negative experiences with people, which I guess is good. Personally, I just want to believe that Bigfoot's a chill guy that is just doing his own thing. So that's why I put him as number seven in the creepy but we can vibe category. A little bit of a silly start to this video, but trust me, this video gets dark quick. Six, Night Marchers. Picture yourself on a Hawaiian beach, watching the final moments of a sunset. And as the sun disappears and the darkness sets in, you begin to hear the faint sound of marching and battle drums in the distance. That is the Night Marchers. Night Marchers in Hawaiian mythology are the deadly ghosts of ancient tribal Hawaiian warriors. These Night Marchers are the vanguard of the sacred king. On the nights honoring the Hawaiian gods, their spirits are said to rise from their burial sites and march in a large group to ancient Hawaiian battle sites and other sacred places. The legend says that the night marchers are dressed for battle, carrying spears, clubs, and some are even beating war drums and blowing tones from conch shells to announce the advancing of their march. According to the myth, they are suspended in air. Their feet do not touch the ground or leave any evidence of their march. Their march continuously goes on from sunset all the way to sunrise. Apart from just hearing the night marchers, you may also smell a death-like odor or see a distant light of bright torches in the distance. Ancient Hawaiian beliefs state that any mortal looking upon the night marchers will die violently. The night marchers are immune to any sort of barrier and are able to penetrate through any blockade, barrier, or material that may stand in their way. There are two primary ways to guarantee safety during a night marcher raid. One is nepotism, basically meaning having family within the tribe or having ancestors within the tribe that is marching. Or secondly, once you hear the night marcher raid, put your head on the ground as a form of respect and keep your head down until the raid has passed fully and you can no longer hear their marching. To me, the night marchers are a pretty creepy phenomenon and just thinking about it, you see a ghost army slowly appearing from the distance and if you gaze upon them, you will die violently. That's pretty scary, but still not really much compared to what's coming. Five, Lorona. Lorona is a Latin American folklore and a perfect example of why you don't act in anger. Lorona is the spirit of a heartbroken woman who found out her husband was cheating on her and in her rage, she drowned both of her children in the local river. She then came to her senses and realized what she did and drowned herself. But unfortunately, the damage was done. And as a punishment from God, she was sentenced to live in between life and death in this purgatory as a spirit on earth. Lorona's spirit is also known as the weeping woman because she can be heard crying and yelling near bodies of water in the middle of the night. She is said to be looking for the spirits of her children, whom she will not find as they have already passed on to the other side. And because of this, in the middle of the night, she will lure wandering children with gifts as a form of apology, and then will drown them. If you are near a body of water at night and hear a woman crying, your best bet is to leave immediately. It is said that just hearing her weeping causes horrible luck, and listening for too long is asking for death. 4. The Kelpie the Kelpie is a prevalent theme in Celtic folklore and has many accounts from Scotland, Ireland, and Iceland that are all relatively consistent in nature. The Kelpie is described as a beautiful black horse standing in shallow water in a loch. The horse may seem inviting, but if you do encounter a Kelpie, the last thing you want to do is mount it. Almost immediately after contact is made between you and the Kelpie, you will notice that you are bound to the horse 
almost seemingly glued to the horse's body wherever you touched it. At this point, the Kelpie will slowly begin to walk deeper and deeper into the water, ultimately drowning you and then eating your body. I personally found the Kelpie more scary than Lorona simply because there is more danger involved. With Lorona, you know there is something creepy going on when you see a screaming ghostly woman. But if you just stumble upon a horse in a lake and it's chill, you're probably going to want to pet it. And at that point, you're already done for. And while Lorona focuses primarily on children, Kelpie doesn't discriminate. If you touch Kelpie, you're done. Three, Mongolian death worm. So you probably know about the Alaskan bullworm, right? Well, the Mongolian death worm is a bit worse. The Mongolian death worm is a creature alleged to exist in the Gobi Desert. In the book On the Trail of Ancient Man, an eyewitness in 1922 described the worm as the following. It is shaped like a sausage, about two or three feet long, has no head nor legs, yet it's so poisonous that merely touching it means instant death. It lives in the most desolate parts of the Gobi Desert. The creature itself is believed to live below the sand and only surfacing to attack its prey, which consists of small rodents, camels, and humans. Besides the creepy nature of a large two, three foot long worm, what's even scarier is its method of killing its prey, which typically consists of either spitting a toxic acid or simply burrowing into the victim's body with its large teeth. Either way, the Mongolian death worm is super scary and not something I'd want to experience. Two, Wendigo. The Wendigo originates from the Algonquin people of Canada and US, and it is a folklore creature that is believed to exist to this day, hidden in extremely remote areas. The Wendigo is often said to be a malevolent spirit that possesses regular innocent humans like you or I. Once possessed, the victim becomes overtaken by this insatiable hunger, greed, and desire for human flesh. Wendigos are commonly described as giants that are many times larger than human beings. Whenever a Wendigo ate another person, it would grow in proportion to the meal it had just eaten, so it could never be full. Therefore, Wendigos are portrayed as simultaneously gluttonous and also extremely thin due to starvation. Although descriptions can somewhat vary, the common denominator between all descriptions of the Wendigo is that it is a malevolent, cannibalistic, supernatural being. An Ojibwe teacher and scholar from Canada gave this description of a Wendigo. The Wendigo was gaunt to the point of emaciation. Its desiccated skin pulled tightly over its bones, with its bones pushing out against its skin. Its complexion was ash gray of death, and its eyes pushed back deep into their sockets. The Wendigo looked like a gaunt skeleton, recently disinherited from its grave. What lips it had were tattered and bloody, unclean and suffering from superation of the flesh. The Wendigo gave off a strange and eerie odor of decay and composition, of death and corruption. The Wendigo is seen as the embodiment of gluttony, greed, and excess. Never satisfied after killing and consuming a person, they are consistently looking and searching for new victims. I think one of the creepiest attributes besides being huge and terrifying in nature is that they still have the human abilities of the victim that they possessed, meaning that the Wendigo can talk, have mental clarity, maybe not mental clarity, but it can think, and it can taunt and even threaten its victims. The concept and potential existence of the Wendigo to me is terrifying and gets us one step closer to our final entry on the list. One, Skinwalker. If you're a true meme connoisseur, you've probably heard reference of skinwalkers at one point or another. Now, what I want to do is not only introduce you to the concept of a skinwalker, but also explain why I believe it to be the most terrifying mythical creature ever. A large population of Navajo people firmly believe in skinwalkers, and even go as far as to limit how much they discuss the evil creatures. Skinwalkers are a witch or shaman of sorts that murdered someone close to them. They often appear as animals, although typically in a beaten and bloodied state. Although they are commonly described as shapeshifters, it is better to think of them as embodying the skin of their victims. Skinwalkers aren't known to kill without a motive and typically stay to themselves. However, if a skinwalker does have a reason to kill, it starts by isolating its victim. They do this best by calling out to the victim, mimicking a familiar voice to lure you towards them. Yeah. Skinwalkers are known to have limited vocabularies and are believed to only know the last words of their previous victims which is why they are commonly reported to be screaming violently or begging for help. Skinwalkers are not invulnerable and for that reason avoid groups and fights that they believe they cannot win. But just know if you ever scare a deer and you see it run away on its back legs, it probably wasn't a deer. Let me know which creature you guys found to be the scariest. I appreciate you guys watching. We're dropping new videos every single week, so if you're new, feel free to subscribe. And if you ever see a skinwalker, leave it alone. Trust me, bro.